Okay, welcome. So this is the fifteenth lecture.、Um, it's about Orzon lemma. Okay, so this lemma is an important lemma that will be used for upcoming theorems. So I just spent this lecture proving the Orzon lemma. So let's take a look at the statement. So the statement says that for a normal space and disjoint closed subsets, and We let A B be a closed interval in the real line. Then there exists a continuous map, such that f x equals a for all x and a, and f x and b for all x and b. So f a is equal to zero.、Uh, a and f b is equal to b. Okay, so that <coughs> so they are separated. Uh, the sets A and B are separated by F, right? And F is a continuous map. Okay, so this is the lemma. So to prove it, uh, sure, without loss of generality, let's just assume the closed interval is zero to one. So in general, it can be pushed from zero to one to A B. So you, you will see while proving the theorem. Okay, so it's not it's not a big deal. It's without loss of generality. So our first step is that we define p to be the rational intersecting with a closed interval, and for each p. And open set U p such that, if p is less than q, then the closure of U p is le、uh, contained in the set U q. Okay, so we want to define. We want to define a collection, a collection of open sets U P, such that we have, we have this condition, okay. We have this condition. <coughs> so this is the step one. So first we know that well since P is countable right so we can just arrange it in a sequence. We define P zero zero P one is one. Okay, so now we define U P. We define U one is X minus B. Because x is normal, which means that there exists an open set U zero such that we have this, right? We use the norm normality of x, okay? And in general, for p n from one n, right? P p one p one p n. This is the set p n. So for any elements. We have this, so we defining, we defining the open sets inductively, right? For any p, we have this. Now we just let r be the next one in the sequence. So we wish to define u r. Now since we know that the set is a finite set, and r is not equal to zero and r is not equal to one, right? So which means that there exists p and q such that r lies between them, and no other elements. Lies between them. Like no other elements lies between here and lies between here, right? It's just R, P, Q. No elements like lies between them. None of them because it's dual since it's a finite set, right? Now, since U P U Q are already defined, so we have this, right? Since X is normal. And we have this, so we're given a closed set and an open set containing the closed set, which means that there exists an open set U R such that it contains the closed set and the closure of the set is contained in the open set that contains the closed set, right? So this is the normality of X. It is proven as the equivalence characterization of normal space. Okay. So we define U R like this. So now we have every element, and this has the this property. Okay, so if both、uh, both indices indices are in P n, then we're done. So we consider S R is in P n plus one. Now, if S is less than equal to P, then we have this. So this is contained in U R. If S is greater than equal to Q, then we have this. Right. So we have this. Which means that 
UP is defined for L, P, and P, right, inductively. Okay. Now we extend the definition of P. So to find UP is empty set of P is negative, and X of P is greater than 1. So this UP, we still have, we still have this. This is still valid. Okay. It is easy to check, all right? So now we want to define a function f. So how do we define it? Well, for any point, first we co uh, we construct the set ux, a qx such that it's the all endlessly such that x is in up. So ux is bounded below, right? Because there's no negative numbers in, because negative is empty, right? It's empty, empty set. You're in, you're in not you, if you're empty set, you got a contradiction. So no negative numbers and also you are not empty right because p greater than one p is in qp right because x is in x right p is in qp so it's down below and is not empty so to find an infimum of the by fx right which is infimum of qx so here we have to find the function f we verify that f is the desired function so if x is an a, then we know that you're in qp for up for any non-negative p, right? So fx is the infimum of this set, all non-negative rationals, right? So the infimum is zero. Now if x is in b, then no p less than or equal to one has x in up, right? Because u1 is x, x minus b, right? So ux is a set of all rational such that it is greater than 1, all right? So fx is an infimum of this set, which is clearly equal to 1. Okay, so we have this and this for 0 and 1, right, for x and a, x and b, yeah? And we just show that f is continuous. So we first show these two subclaim, right? We first show these two uh, condition. So to show the first one, now if x is in u bar, u r bar, then x is in u s for any s greater than r, right? So all the set, so we have this condition. Right? x is in u s for any s greater than r. So this is a subset of qx. Which means that fx is an infimum, which is less than the infimum of this set, which is equal to r. Now, this one is done. To show this one, now x is not in ur, that x is not in us for any s less than r. Right? So r is a lower bound of qx. Right? Yeah. For any s less than r, we have this. Right? So r is a lower bound of qx which means that you have this because you're defined to be the greatest lower bound right so now we show the continuity it's easy to show that because given any f any x naught and an interval such that it contains an interval we want a neighborhood u of x naught such that f u is containing the the, the interval so first we just choose uh, PQ such that we can do this choice, right? Because the rationals is dense in the reals. For any two reals, we can find the rational that lies between them. So here we have this thing. So we claim that UQ minus U bar P is the desired set. Why? So let's take a look. Now, x, fx now is less than u, less than q, right? By 2, by 2, we do the contrapositive, uh, we do the contrapositive. Not this implies not this, right? So we have this, we give this, not this, which means that we have this. And similarly, by the contrapositive 1, we have this. So x now is in u, q, and x now is not in u, p, which means that x is in u, right? f u is in c, d, so we'll x in u. 
Now, x is in u cubed. Containing this by one, we have this. And you're not in the closure, so you're not in this. So we'll have this by two. So fx is contained in pq, lies in cd. So as desired. Okay, so, so this leads to the definition. If there exists a function continuous such that fa is zero, fb is one, we said a, b are separated by continuous function. So the Urizon lama states that for a, b closed in a normal space can be separated by a continuous function. And note that the regularity is not enough for the proof of Urizon lama. So at least your new definition of being completely regular is that one point sets are closed and for x naught and closed a, such so that a not contains x naught, we can separate them by continuous function. Give the definition completely regular. Okay? So, this concludes the lecture.